state management in React can be done in a lot of different ways, like using state machines in XState, for example. So let's take a look at how to use XState to define your state as a state machine. Okay, so to get started, we're first of all going to be taking a look at what we're actually building. So I've prepared this little example of a traffic light right here, which can currently be controlled using the app.jsx by just defining what color it is supposed to have in this value right here. So all of the traffic light is already implemented. As you can see, it's basically just controlling classes using the props. So we won't really get into that, but we'll get into how to use xState for it. And to get started, we're first of all going to need to npm install xState and add xState slash react to integrate it into our app. So now that that is done, we can actually already go ahead and create a traffic light machine dot JS file, which will basically contain our definition for our little machine. And this is basically what we're building. So we're going to have a starting point and the traffic light is going to start off being red. And then we can basically switch it. So we'll send an event called switch to make it red, yellow, then green, then yellow and red. And the good thing about a state machine is if you're at red, you can't immediately jump to green. So you're defining how your state machine will behave because it can't behave in any other way than you defined previously. So if we, for example, need to repair the traffic light, we can go from red to red yellow. Then we find out we need to repair it, go to repair, but we now can't switch it anymore. So it won't change color except for if we restart it and go back to red. Okay, so now to get started, we're first of all going to need to export const graphic light machine and this machine is going to be created using create machine from x state and it's going to get an object as a parameter and that object is first of all going to have an id so something like tl for traffic light it's going to have states which are basically the different states it can be in so red green etc and to define this is quite simple we're just going to say okay one state is red and we want to define how we can get away from red in this object but to do that, we're just going to define another state real quick. And that state is going to be red, yellow, because a traffic light switches from red to red and yellow. And now to move on, we can say, okay, when I toggle the switch event, we will change to red, yellow. And that is basically how you would do state transitions. So now you can do the same thing with green. So let's just say green here. And on switch, we'll switch from red, yellow to green. And now we just need to do this for all the other states as well. Nice. So now we can also define our last state, which is going to be the repair state. So basically a traffic light that blinks in yellow. So repair and repair will trigger using the restart event and that will bring it back to red. And every other one will have another event called repair. And that's basically the either way you can do state transitions in here. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to integrate this into the app. So we can do const state and send equals use machine and we'll just put the traffic light machine in here. And that's basically how we integrate the machine. So we can now say that our value is state.value and that all of these buttons will basically trigger these events. So on click equals send switch for the switch button and of course the other states for the other buttons. So the repair button will of course trigger repair and the restart button will trigger restart. And if we now just head back into our app and reload, we'll see that nothing is loading currently, which is to be expected because we didn't actually tell it what our default value is supposed to be. So to fix that, we'll just go in here and say initial and our traffic light is going to start off being red. And now if we just head back here, we can see the traffic light is red. And if we switch, it turns red, yellow. If we switch again, it turns green, yellow, red, red, yellow, etc. And if we hit repair, we can see we are already in the repair state. So now if I switch, nothing happens because we didn't tell it that switch does anything in Red Repair State, which is exactly what we want. We can only get out of here if we hit restart. And now everything is back to normal. But I've also added this little times broken thing in here. So how do we actually do that? Well, we can actually add more information to this by adding a context to our traffic light machine. And the context is basically additional state that you can get by, uh, during state changes. So for example, what we're going to do is we're going to count how often the broken state or the repair state is initialized. And to do that, we'll just say, okay, times broken equals zero. And then in our repair state, we can just add another parameter called entry. And entry will just be an arrow function that gets our context as a parameter and says, okay, context.timesbroken plus plus. And now we can actually head back to our app and the state, of course, doesn't just have a value, 
but it also has our context. So if we just go here, state.context.timesbroken, and here we can also say state.value to actually display our state. We now just head back here. We can see times broken is zero. If we switch, we can see our value changing down here. And if we hit repair, we can see times broken increases. But if we hit repair again, it doesn't because we're already in that state and we can't go from the state to itself. So if we now hit restart and repair, then our times broken count increases. So basically the advantage of using the state machine model is that you will always have the expected behavior if you define that right in your machine. You can't go to any state that doesn't make sense because then you would have done a mistake in your machine. The code can't do something that you didn't expect and the user can't either. But maybe you want to globalize this concept as well. So how about you check out this video where I'll show you how to globalize your state management with nothing but React providers. So let's check it out.